Hi everybody, I'm Dawn Hopkins and this is Colleen Bender. We're here to teach you chair yoga today. A couple things that you'll want to have available include a chair. A folding chair works really great. Just make sure you have some stoppers on the bottom so it doesn't slip. But also putting it on a yoga mat will help with that as well. Some blocks like this. If you have one or two, that's ideal. Um, if you don't have blocks and you happen to have like large cans in your kitchen, that will work as well. A yoga strap. If you don't have a strap, you can use a belt or a men's tie. That works great. And then having a blanket available. Mexican blankets work great, but if you have a beach towel, that works as well. So just have those tools available before you get started. And then we're going to come into a seated position on our chair. So I want you to kind of come away from the back of the chair. We are uh, working toward really good postural alignment and we want to make sure that we're seated up nice and tall. Have your feet planted on the ground. Um, if your chair is a little too high for you, you can always place the feet on blocks, um, but you don't want to have more than a 90 degree angle um, in your knees. So check on that. Make sure your feet are about hip width distance apart. And then sitting up nice and tall. So we want to stack our ears over our shoulders and our shoulders over our hips. We're in a nice straight line. And then go ahead and close your eyes. We just want to begin to connect and center here. So close your eyes. And we're going to do three cleansing breaths just to reset our breathing to come out of a fight or flight state and into the rest and digest nervous system before we begin our practice. So inhale deeply through the nose, filling all the way in. Exhale out in open mouth. Good, let's take two more breaths like that. Inhale deeply and exhale out. Beautiful. One more big deep breath. And exhale, release. <sighs> Sitting up nice and tall in your chair with your shoulders relaxed back and down, lifting up through the crown of the head. Take one hand and rest it on your chest. Take the other hand and just rest it on your belly for the moment. Good, now I want you to start to bring some awareness to your breathing. As you breathe in and out, notice if either of your hands moves. You may notice the hand on the upper chest lifting toward the chin as you breathe in. And then maybe it falls away from the chin and kind of sinks into your chest as you breathe out. Continue with a few more awareness breaths. We can't change what we're not aware of. So we want to bring awareness to our breathing so that we can begin to harness the full power of the breath. Beautiful, now start to really slow and deepen your breathing. Breathing in more to the fullness of your lungs. You can keep your hands as they are or you might wanna take your index fingers and thumbs and just frame your rib cage. Again, relax those shoulders down and as you breathe in, See if you can breathe into the rib cage so much so that your hands expand away from the center of your body. As you breathe out, feel those hands close in, closer together. So you're expanding in every direction. Inhaling, expanding into that rib cage, bringing the breath into the lower parts of your lungs. Exhale, let all the breath go. Beautiful, one more breath like this, filling into the fullness of your rib cage. And exhale. Now take your fingers and thumbs together in a downturn triangle and place it around your navel. Again, relax those shoulders back and down, sitting up nice and tall. And now we're gonna inhale just like we were, trying to expand into the fullness of the rib cage, but see if the breath comes all the way down into the belly. As you do that, the fingers may part, and then as you exhale, soften the belly, squeeze all the breath out, notice if the fingers come closer together. A couple more breaths like that. 
Imagine you're filling into a balloon, into your belly and your ribcage and chest. Diaphragmatic breathing. Exhaling, letting all the breath go. Good. As you use your diaphragm, it's a muscle that separates the thoracic cavity from your abdominal cavity. And when you breathe in, it pushes down. That causes that expansion in the belly. It kind of pushes the organs around and out. And then as you exhale, it contracts back upward, creating that space in the belly for everything to soften back in. So continue to breathe like this or release control over the breath, but just find a nice, slow, steady, deep rhythm for your breathing. Today I want to spend some time talking about mindfulness. So we know that yoga is a mindful practice. And mindfulness is really a practice of intention coupled with attention. And so what I mean by that is we set an intention of what it is that we want to get out of our class. For some of us, it might be stress relief, relaxation, improving our range of motion. Maybe we're here for medical reasons, whatever the case may be. What is it that we want to get out of this class in this moment? It's actually called a sankalpa in Sanskrit, in yoga terms. But set that intention for your practice today. And then we're going to continue to redirect our attention. So we use a term called dristi, which is known as our gaze or where we focus our eyes. But it's much more than that. It's really where we focus our attention. So just like if we had a camera and we're focusing the lens of the camera, on one thing, a single pointed focus. And as we do that, everything else begins to kind of fade into the background, it becomes blurry. So we'll continue to redirect our attention back to our intention, back to our sankalpa throughout our practice. That essentially is the practice of mindfulness. And so today, I wanna to share with you a quote, it tells you a little bit about what mindfulness really is. If I could find the quote, I think I should. <laughs> James Barras said, mindfulness is simply being aware of what is happening right now without wishing it were different, enjoying the pleasant without holding on when it changes, which it will, being with the unpleasant without fearing it will always be this way, which it won't. So essentially, it's a dispassionate awareness, an unattached awareness, moment by moment, staying in the present moment and continuing to redirect our attention back. So we might notice that our attention kind of goes off into different directions. We might notice that our dristi, our gaze, shifts from one thing to another. Mindfulness is a practice of redirecting our attention back. Taking a few moments, kind of noticing as things kind of well up, our focus shifts, and then continuing to bring it back, bring it back to your breath, bring it back to your intention, just gently, without judgment, and with total acceptance of all that is in this moment. Beautiful, sitting up nice and tall. Begin to do some shoulder rolls. So we're gonna lift the shoulders up by the ears, shrugging them up, doesn't that feel good? This is how we spend a lot of our days. Exhale, release them back and down. Ah, much nicer. Good, a few more like that. Shoulders weren't meant to be earrings, it's something I always say in my classes. So see if you can release those shoulders away from the ears as you roll them out. Good, and then we're gonna take it in the other direction. So shoulders lift up and round forward, just rolling them. Good, lots of breath as you move. Good, and then we're gonna do one more coming up, 
back and down as if you're sliding your uh, scapula or your shoulder blades into your pockets. Continue to sit up nice and tall here, and then we're going to release our right ear toward our right shoulder. Just breathe, allowing that left shoulder to release away from the ear. If you want to take it a little deeper, you can actually relax that left hand out to the side. That weight of the arm will just help to release the shoulder away from the ear. Creating space. If you want to, now you can take a hold of the side of your head with your right hand. Now we're not going to force anything, but we're going to gently encourage a little deeper stretch. So maybe it's just the weight of that hand, or maybe just a gentle pull, releasing that right ear toward the right shoulder. Keep relaxing that left shoulder down. We carry tons of tension in the jaw, the neck, and the shoulders. So we're going to get into those areas to just release that countering the effects of stress on the body. Good, release your grip, coming back to neutral. Close your eyes if they're not already and notice the difference in the way the two sides of the neck feel. Or maybe one shoulder feels lower than the other. We're gonna even that out, so begin to release your left ear toward your left shoulder. Again, Breathe into that space, allowing the right shoulder to fall away. Maybe take that right arm out to the side and let it hang. Or even take a hold of the bottom of the chair. Just keep releasing that shoulder away from the ear. And then if you want to add on, take the left hand rested on the side of the skull and then continue to just deepen the stretch. Use your breath. Let it assist you in letting go stress and of tension and let the breath keep returning you to a space of conscious awareness. Release that grip, bringing the head back to neutral. Just take your hands, rest them on the thighs for a moment, and then we're going to draw the chin toward our chest. Press the skull away from the body like you're pressing the crown toward the front of the room. Inhale, keep that chin drawn in like you're holding a pencil between your chin and your neck, and then you're going to roll that head back. Let the chin lift as you roll the skull back. We're going to do a few more like that. And exhale, chin to chest, rolling forward. Inhale, rolling back. Now if you want to take this a little deeper and you don't have any healing projects going on in your neck, I'm going to give you another option. So you can interlace the fingers behind the skull. And then as you exhale, you're going to round forward and bring the elbows toward one another. As you inhale, open those elbows up. Continue to draw the skull back, pressing it into the hands. Continue to draw the elbows back as your gaze goes high. And just go with whatever feels good to you. Exhale, chin draws in, elbows come toward each other. Inhale, elbows open up. Skull draws back. Good, one more like that. Finding some nice opening through that heart space. And then release coming to neutral. Float those hands down. Good. Now hinging at the hips, and what I mean by that is instead of rounding forward, we're actually going to hinge at the hips and lean forward so the chest moves forward, and then begin to release your hands down. So maybe they find the blocks. If it's available, maybe they can come all the way down to the floor. Just relax your head here. 
It's releasing into your low back. And the back body. Good. Slowly begin to lift up like you're going up halfway. So maybe the fingertips come onto those blocks and you have a nice long straight spine. Shoulders away from those ears. Exhale, fold out. Good. Inhale, lifting. Halfway for length. And exhale, fold. Beautiful. Take your hands to your thighs, and then you're going to press your way up. It's coming back into that seated position. Beautiful. We're going to go ahead and we're going to interlace our fingers around the outside of that right shin, just below the knee. We're going to draw that in and just begin to circle it a little bit, just starting to open up into that hip and beginning to lubricate that hip joint. We have certain joints in our body that are called synovial joints, and that means that they have synovial fluid in them. And synovial means egg-like. Syn means like, and novia means egg. So it's an egg-white-like substance that helps to form some glide or some slipperiness into that joint area. Take it in the other direction. The hip is one of those joints. So we're helping to create Ease and movement and flow in that joint. Good. We're going to go ahead and pick up that leg. Take the ankle and cross it over the knee. Now, if this is difficult for you, you can always have the leg like this. Just listen to your body, but if it's available, see if you can kind of create more of a number four shape with your leg. Flex into that foot. And then we're going to continue to prime the pump in that hip joint a little bit. So lifting the knee and exhale, lowering it back down. Good. And just kind of move with it. Flow with it. Just imagining that that fluid in the joint is moving unencumbered. Good. Now we're going to allow that knee to open up. So maybe put just a little bit of pressure into that leg. And then you're holding onto the foot, almost encouraging a slight lift of the ankle as you gently press down into the knee. Good. Now you can stay here, or if it's available, maybe you begin to hinge forward at the hips, or maybe you get some movement going and you begin to make some circles with the torso. See which one feels better, a static fold or maybe some movement here. Beautiful. If you've been moving, see if you can find a little place you need to settle into. Sometimes it's off to the side a little bit, sometimes it's right in the center. Wherever your body is calling you to kind of be static and breathe into. Ah, <sighs> let that breath go. We also get tension and tightness into our hips. When we're stressed, when we're in that fight or flight state. So as if you could direct the breath into that space to release held tension and stress, to create space and opening into that joint. Beautiful. Slowly begin to rise up. We're going to cross that leg over sitting up nice and tall here. You can just relax that leg now. Again, we're sitting up, stacking our ears over shoulders, shoulders over our hips. Take your left hand to the outside of your left knee, and then you're gonna bring your right arm behind you. You can take a hold of the back of the chair if that feels good to you. Lengthen first, and then begin to rotate your torso. Don't take the gaze just yet. So let the body move first, because a lot of times we try to do the twist from our head and we're not really twisting at all, we're just twisting into the neck. Now let your gaze begin to slide toward the side wall and maybe over toward that back wall. Good, breathe here. 
70% of our toxins leave the body through the breath, so make these twists count. Breathe out what you no longer need, the stuff that keeps you from being able to focus, from being able to be mindful. In yoga, we call that chitta. It's the mind stuff. It's the busy mind that keeps us from being able to be focused. Slowly begin to unravel that twist, sitting up nice and tall. And we're just going to unravel those legs. I'm going to shake it out a little bit. Good. Pick up the left knee. Draw that in towards you. Sitting up nice and tall, begin to just circle into that knee. Once again, creating some movement here. A couple things about chair yoga practices. It's really nice because even if you don't have a yoga mat, even if you're at work, taking a break, or if you're not able to really get on and off of a floor for whatever reason, it gives you the ability to practice yoga. So we're going to see how we can adapt a yoga practice to a chair. Make sure you go in both directions. Beautiful. And then we're going to cross that ankle again over the knee. Flex it into that foot. It helps to protect the ankle, knee, and hip joints. Good. And then we're going to go ahead and continue to lubricate into that joint. So lift the knee, lower it back down. Just move with it. I think sometimes we get ourselves stuck in a box. I can't do yoga because I'm not flexible. Or I can't do yoga because I can't get on and off a floor. But everybody and anybody can do yoga. It's just a matter of adapting your practice to meet you where you are. Beautiful. We're going to sit up nice and tall. Continue to encourage that knee forward and down at the same time. Just a gentle lift. We're not forcing anything. We're just assisting, encouraging a deeper stretch. Lots of breath. And then if you want to, you can... Fold forward in a static fashion, or maybe you begin to circle your torso. Just feel that nice release into the hips, into the low back. Movement is wonderful for our joints, our bodies. We're born to move. And when we're sitting in a chair for long periods of time, if we're working in an environment that we're in a chair a lot, it can take its toll on our body. This really helps to counter the effects of that. And then find a place where you want to settle in. Again, keeping those shoulders back and down. Maybe it's off to the side. Maybe it's in the center. Just find a place where you feel like you really want to melt into and breathe. Slowly begin to rise back up, and then we're going to cross that leg over, taking a hold of that knee with our right hand, again, sitting up nice and tall, reach that left hand behind, maybe take a hold of the back of the chair or even the side of the chair, whatever works, lengthen first, and then begin to rotate the torso, keep the gaze forward for the moment, letting the torso go, and then take your gaze with it, maybe let the gaze gaze slide over that shoulder toward the back wall. Beautiful job. Slowly unravel that twist. Unravel the legs. Shake it out. And then we're going to go ahead and take a hold of our strap. We're going to create a little deeper stretch and a little more range of motion into the shoulders. So one of the things that happens when um, we're stressed or when we're seated a lot or just from our day to day is that our shoulders will begin to round forward and our chin kind of juts out and we end up in this position. And then we end up with tension and tightness in the neck and the shoulders. And our body starts to learn that posture and it wants to stay there. So we have to 
reteach it proper alignment. And some of that is really opening up into the pectoralis minor area, so into the chest, and then creating a little bit of strength um, behind the scapula, behind the shoulder blades, um, by kind of hugging them together. So we're going to do a little bit of that using a strap. So take your strap and you're going to take it a little bit wider than your hips. For some of us who have shoulder issues, which I do, you might need to go a little wider than that. So just, you'll know once you get into the shape whether or not you need to adjust. So we're keeping the shoulders back and down with the strap nice and tight in front of us and then lift that strap up overhead. Good. We're going to begin to take the strap behind us. So I'm going to have to come a little bit wider and in order to keep my arms relatively straight. So bringing those hands behind till you start to feel a stretch. Now stay there for a few breaths. Maybe even close your eyes and let the breath, time, and gravity begin to open up that space for you. We're going to come back just a little further. So maybe you lower the arms a few inches. Good. See if you can come a little lower than that. Imagine that you're reaching those hands toward the wall behind you at the same time you're holding onto that strap. And if it ever becomes painful, and if you have a healing project in your shoulders, adjust as you need to, either taking it wider or maybe you stop here. Maybe you stop in that place where you're like, yep, that's where I need to stop. And that's part of mindfulness, really listening to the cues that our body gives us and responding to them in a healthy and appropriate way. See if you can come down even lower. Maybe the arms begin to release down toward the floor now. Good. Relaxing until they come all the way down to where you're able to bring those down toward the sides of your hips even. And then we're going to begin to lift back up. So finding a new place on the way up. Stay there. Breathe into it. Inhale, see if you can come up a little higher. It's like two, three breaths in each of our sticky spots. We call those speed bumps. They're there to slow us down. So mindfulness is, again, not running right past those and missing the benefit of staying there and breathing. So come up a little higher. Again, find another place. Breathe into it. You might notice that the room suddenly got warm. Finding another place, coming up a little higher. Maybe a little higher than that. Until you come all the way back up. And then exhale, release those arms in front of you. You're going to take your hands about a fist closer than they were. You're going to notice how much space we created by just doing what we did. So inhale, coming up. Exhale, coming all the way through. Look at that. We created all this space to move through. Inhale, coming up. And exhale, coming forward. Again, making any adjustments in the width as you need to. A couple more like that. So this is like we're flossing our shoulders, getting all the junk out of our shoulders that impinges our range of motion and our movement. Good. And come back up. Awesome job. We're going to just release that strap for the time being. I'm going to just shake those shoulders out a little bit. Notice how much more space you have in those shoulders. So just close the eyes. Check back in for a moment. <sighs> All right. We're going to stand up now. And we're going to turn the chair to face the other direction. So just go ahead and move your chair. Good. So the height of it is going to depend on whether or not you have range of motion. Okay. So Colleen is going to go ahead and she's going to turn hers the opposite way because I just want to show you guys how we can be at different levels. 
Mine will be a little bit lower, okay? So you're gonna stand right in front of your chair. We're gonna inhale. You were fine. Oh, okay, sorry. You're gonna stand right in front of your chair that's now facing the other direction. And then on the inhale, sweep up. Good, we're gonna do a little lateral bending here. So float that right hand down and just hinge to the right a little bit. We're gonna move with that inhale, bringing the arms back up. And exhale, take it to the other side. Maybe your gaze goes with your hand. Inhale up. And exhale, float. Inhale up. And exhale, float. Good job. One more time. And release. Nice job. Good. Inhaling all the way back up. You can bring your hands to your heart or you can slide them to your hips. We're going to take a bend in those knees and we're going to release our hands down to the chair. So you might need to walk your feet a little bit back. You want to have the hands so that they're stacking right underneath your shoulders and then um, your hips are stacking right over your heels. So we're in a tabletop position, nice long straight spine. Exactly. Beautiful job. So again, you can be at that higher level like Colleen is, or you can be lower just depending on what's available for you. We're gonna do what's called cat-cow. So on the inhale, I want you to lift the tailbone up, press the navel down, slide your heart forward, and then lift up through the crown of the head. Awesome. On the exhale, curl your tail under. You might take a little bend in those knees, round the spine, and bring your chin to your chest. Ears will drop to the insides of your biceps. Inhale, lift, tail comes up, belly presses down, heart slides forward, crown lifts. Exhale, curl that tail under, draw the navel in, round your back, chin to chest. Good, inhale, lifting up, press the navel down, slide the heart forward, lift the crown. Exhale, tuck and round it out. Beautiful. Coming back to a neutral position in the middle, so a nice long straight spine here. Tummy is tucked in, so the core is engaged and that low back is protected. Bend into your left knee. You're going to slide your left hand directly underneath your shoulder if it's not already there, and then bring the right arm out to the side like a wing. Beautiful. On the inhale, begin to sweep that arm all the way up toward the ceiling if that's available for you. Your gaze will go with your hand if that's available in your neck. Feel that stretch all the way through the fingertips. Lots of breath here. Excellent job. Exhale, slowly float that hand back down. Bend into the right knee. Right hand is directly underneath your right shoulder. And then on your inhale, left hand comes high. Stretch and reach it all the way up. Nice. Reach through those fingertips. Nice length. And exhale, release. Good, now maybe you can begin to bend those elbows and release the head down. So coming into more of a forward fold shape. You can even stack your hands and release your forehead to your hands. And then begin to pedal it out a little here. So Master Koa Koksui said, do not have too many objectives. One pointedness is the key to success. So remember what I said about where we focus our gaze, where we fix our attention. One pointedness is developing laser-like focus and attention. Like I said earlier, it's like focusing a camera. So continue to redirect your attention back to your original intention and also back to your breath. Good, we're gonna lift up halfway. So coming up, stacking those hands once again. And this time we're going to start walking our feet back, coming into a modified down dog. So you might hold on to the edges of the chair. Make sure your chair's not going anywhere. We don't want it to slide out. 
and then begin to release your ears toward the insides of your biceps. Lift your tail up and back, melt your heart here. Lots of breath as you release into the backs of those legs. Maybe you bend one knee and then the other if your hamstrings are tight. Just really luxuriating in this down dog. Nice job. Feet are parallel. Maybe they're slightly pigeon-toed in. Continue to release your chest here. Beautiful job. And then slowly coming up, walk the feet forward. Coming back to your chair. And then we're going to go ahead and step our left foot back. So you're going to angle that foot. It's going to be on... 45 to a 90 degree angle, enough to get this hip to begin to open up. Step your right foot forward enough that your right knee is stacking right over that heel when you bend deeply into the knee. Only go as much as your body allows you to go, so if you have some healing projects going on in the knees, definitely honor your body. But that knee is tracking with your foot, and the knee is bent. And you're holding on to the chair. So I'm in a lower version of this. Um, Colleen is going to be holding on to the higher part of the chair. And then we're going to take our left hand to our left hip bone and begin to open this up. So we want the shoulder to kind of roll back that left shoulder, and we want the left hip to begin to roll open as well. Check in with your front knee that it's not sliding in. You want it to stack over the foot. And then reach your left hand high into side angle. So left hand will reach toward the ceiling. And if you want to come up and over with it into more of an extended side angle, reach the fingertips toward the front of the room. Just make sure the shoulder doesn't rise up toward the ear. Beautiful. Now begin to reach that left hand toward the wall behind you. And then you're going to slide yourself up. Right arm comes forward, left arm comes back. So if this is not available for you, if you need to continue to hold onto that chair and just do it with one arm, feel free to do that. You can also adjust the height of your chair. If you want something in between where I'm at and where Colleen is at, you can place a block on the chair and bring that hand a little bit higher, but not as high as the uh, back of the chair. Beautiful job. Float that hand down to the chair. So both of your hands now are coming to the chair. And then you're going to pivot onto the ball of your back foot and bend into your front knee into a modified lunge. Good. So that left heel will be lifting if that's available for you. Just sink into this a little bit. Continue to breathe. Listening to your body. Nice job. Now maybe from this lunge position, you can begin to reach your hand, one hand or both hands to the knee. Maybe you can start to play with building some strength if that's available. If that's not, just keep your hands on the chair. For some people, you might even, if you're in the higher position, like Colleen is, you might reach one arm up toward the ceiling, coming into more of a crescent lunge shape, but still supporting yourself with the chair. So listen to your body. Be where you need to be. Honor yourself. If your hand's lifted, go ahead and release it down. And then we're going to step our back foot forward a little bit. Both of our toes are going to point forward. Both of our feet are going to point forward. And make sure that you're not on a tightrope. So you don't want to have the feet like lining up exactly. You want that left foot out to the left, but mostly pointed forward. So this is a pyramid shape. We're going to lift up, making sure that spine is long. The right hip is going to want to kick out to the right, so draw it in and back to really square the hips toward the front of the room. And your chest as well. Beautiful. So maybe this is where you stay. If you can keep the spine long and straight and you have the space available, maybe you can begin to release down onto those forearms. Just listen to your body. 
and make sure you're not dumping into your shoulders. If you need to take a bend in that front knee, feel free to do that. You just want to find a place where you're getting a stretch. So don't bend it so much that you no longer feel a stretch. Beautiful job. Begin to lift up halfway. And then we're going to step the feet forward again. Shake those legs out. Maybe you tap it out a little bit. Good. And then bend those knees and then just release down into a forward fold. Chang Zhu said, first gain control of the body, then control of the mind. Attain one-pointedness. Then the harmony of heaven will come down and dwell in you. You will be radiant with life. So it's interesting. When we gain control of the body, we can then begin to master the mind. If our body is all over the place, it's very difficult for us to attain this one-pointedness and attain mindfulness. So the practice of yoga is really about being able to be still so that we can quiet the mind and start to practice the higher practices of yoga, like meditation and mindfulness practices. It's not just about the postures or the shapes. Good. On that inhale, we're going to lift up, bringing the hands back to the chair right underneath our shoulders. And then go ahead and step that right foot back, pivoting it on an angle. Bring your left foot forward so that the heel is stacking right underneath that knee and the knee is tracking with the foot and it's not collapsing in. Your left hand will go to the chair. Take your right hand to that right hip. Begin to Open the heart up, drawing that right shoulder back and lifting through the hip, and then take the right hand high into side angle pose. Again, if you want to, you can reach all the way up and over. Just keep that shoulder away from the ear if you're doing that, and feel that big stretch through the whole side body, wherever you are. Beautiful. On the inhale, reach that right hand behind you, slowly rising up. Again, you can continue to hold the chair or see if maybe you can come into Warrior Two for just a moment. Shoulders are away from the ears. Fingers are reaching out, extending in opposite directions. Maybe you're gazing over that front hand. And if that's not available, just bring your hand to the chair. Reach that arm all the way up and over. Hands come back to the chair. You're coming on the ball of that back foot. Sink low into this runner's lunge. And breathe. Whatever we focus on expands. So continue to focus your attention on things that are uplifting, that bring you love and light and joy and peace. Beautiful. We're going to lift up just a little bit to step that back foot forward. Both of the feet are angling toward the front of the room. Make sure you're not on a tightrope. So if you need to take that right foot to the right a little to make room for the hips, do. And then draw this left hip in and back to make sure you're squaring your hips and shoulders to the front of the room. Good. Stay here for a few breaths, shoulders away from those ears, nice long straight spine in pyramid. And breathe. According to yoga theory, wherever we focus our attention, our energy, our prana will flow there. So notice where you're directing your attention. 
What are you putting energy into? Sometimes it's not always beneficial. Sometimes it's not always positive. So the practice of mindfulness empowers us to direct our attention toward things that are healthy, beneficial, uplifting, the things that are going to be helpful. If it's available, now see if maybe you can begin to lower down onto those forearms. If not, stay where you are. Again, make sure you're not dumping into those shoulders. Breathe into this pyramid pose. Nice job. Begin to come back up. Nice. And then we're going to step the feet forward. Shake it out a little. And then bend those legs and fold over them, coming into a forward fold. Good. So they begin to rise back up. And then we're gonna to begin to take our feet about hip width distance apart, depending on how it feels in your low back. For some people, you may want to bring the feet close together. And then we're gonna start bending the knees, coming into like a squat position. So you're hugging those thighs together, hugging your navel toward your spine, letting that tailbone kind of soften down. Good. And what we're doing is creating what's called an inner, inner spiral. We're hugging those thighs together. It helps to strengthen our pose. You can stay here or you can bring one arm out to the side. Maybe you can experiment with bringing, bringing both out to the side. Just take your time. Listen to your body. And if you prefer to have the hands down, have the hands down. Yoga is a progression. It's a practice. And so over time, the more we practice these things, the stronger we'll become and the more natural they'll feel. That will open us up to go to other places in our practice. Beautiful. We're gonna do a few cat cows from here. So lifting the tail up with the hands pressed into the chair, Press the heart forward, roll the shoulders back. Good, on the exhale, curl the tail, draw the navel in, round the back, chin to chest. You're still keeping those knees bent. If you need a break, by all means, straighten those legs, take a break, and then join us when you're able. Lifting the tail, arching the spine, lifting your gaze. Exhale, curling into the spine, tucking and rounding, chin to your chest. Beautiful. A few more like that. Good, we're gonna come neutral with the spine and then step our feet wide. Yep, the feet will be parallel to one another or they'll slightly angle in toward each other. So listen to your body, take them as wide as you feel comfortable and then we're gonna just start halfway lifted. So hands are right underneath those shoulders, spine is nice and long and straight, shoulders are away from those ears. Beautiful, keep breathing here. If the space becomes available, begin to fold forward, maybe releasing the arms, maybe stacking the hands and releasing the head in this wide angle forward fold. Nice, slowly begin to rise up. 
coming up halfway. And then we're gonna try another twist. So this time, bring that left hand directly underneath you. Take the right arm out to the side like a wing. Nice long straight spine here. And then on the inhale, see if you can reach those fingertips up toward the ceiling. Maybe you can only come a little way, maybe not. Just whatever happens, happens. Let go of any expectations and just be where you are. Exhale, float that hand down. And then we're gonna switch hands. So now the right hand comes down, left arm out to the side like a wing. Keeping the spine long, begin to lift the fingertips up and rotate your torso to the left. Nice. Stretching and breathing as you move. Nice. Exhale. Lower that down. And then we're just going to bend one knee and then the other. So bend into that right knee, kind of sink down, straighten the leg. Bend the other leg, straighten. Good. Moving from side to side. Nice job. Now we're going to angle the toes out so the heels come in. Beautiful. Bend into those knees and kind of sink down a little bit. This is modified goddess pose. And just allow yourself to kind of settle into the shape. Good. For some of you, you may want to experiment with bringing your hands on top of those thighs or to the hips. Just see what's available and then maybe you can begin to stack ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Even if it's just for a moment, you're teaching the body how to hold the shape. So maybe you're here for just a moment and then you come back, just kind of experimenting, starting to build some strength, starting to teach the body how to hold the pose. Beautiful. If your legs are quivering, that's normal. That's all part of training those muscles and retraining our body. Float those hands back down. Angle the toes in, heels slightly out, and then just fold and relax one more time. Yvonne Davis said, the practice of mindfulness begins in the small remote cave of your unconscious mind and blossoms with the sunlight of your conscious life, reaching far beyond the people and the places you can see. It's really amazing. This practice of mindfulness isn't just meant for our yoga practice. It's meant to bring consciousness and awareness and mindfulness to every area of our life. And as we do that, we can actually impact other people and things far beyond what we can see. Beautiful job. Slowly begin to come back up. We're going to toe heel those feet toward one another. Good. Take a little bend in those knees. And an inhale, you're going to come all the way up, reaching up to standing. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. We're going to do a half Sun Series A here. We're going to just do a few rounds of that to just kind of move everything through the body, clearing out space and creating that flow and movement in our body. Inhale, sweep, arms up. Exhale, bend those knees forward, fold. Bring the hands to the chair. Inhale, press into the hands, lift halfway for length. Exhale, bow out. Inhale, sweep high, riding that breath all the way up to standing. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Inhale, lift all the way up. 
exhale, bend those knees, forward fold, hands to the chair, bow out, release the head. Inhale, straighten and lift halfway. Exhale, forward fold, bow out. Inhale, sweeping all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, sweep, arms lift. Exhale, arms go wide, fold it out. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep, arms all the way up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Nice, one more like that. Inhale, sweeping. Exhale, folding. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep all the way up. And exhale, hands to your heart. Nice. Take a moment, just grounding down into those feet, plugging into the earth. Drawing the navel in and up slightly, rolling the shoulders back and down, lifting through the crown of the head. Draw your skull back slightly. Feel how different you feel now from when you began class. Nice. Now if you have your chair with the back of it facing you, go ahead and turn it the other way so it's like mine with the seat facing you. We're going to set ourselves up here for our final rest position. Bring your blanket and you're going to take it kind of near the other end of your mat. And then make your way down. So you can use your chair to come all the way back down to the floor. Now if this isn't available for you, then you can just come to your chair and do your final meditation there, seated like we began. If it's available for you to get onto the floor, come all the way down. We're going to do one of my favorites. It's called Instant Maui. It's fantastic for decompressing the spine, but it also helps to reverse the flow of gravity, um, reverse the effect of gravity on the body. And in addition to that, it helps with edema, swelling in the legs. It helps with circulation, um, and it's very, very calming for the body. So you're gonna slide your seat fairly close to your chair, and then you're gonna bring your legs to rest up on top. Okay, so the backs of the legs are resting. If you need to kind of press your seat a little closer, try to get as much of a 90 degree angle as you can in those knees. And then gently begin to lower yourself down. And then take the blanket and position it underneath your head. Beautiful. You can let your feet slide through the opening if that feels good so you can really relax those legs. And then your hands can come alongside your hips with the palms facing up. Make sure the shoulders are away from the ears. They can also come out to the sides if that feels good. Or you can come into cactus arms. Wherever you are is perfect. Begin to close your eyes and then take a moment to return to your final intention. Redirect your attention back, the intention you established at the beginning of class. Begin to settle into a nice, slow, deep, rhythmic breath. And begin to take a moment to visualize that that has manifested. That your intention has come to be. Maybe you can even phrase it as an I am statement. So maybe you wanted stress relief, maybe you wanted relaxation, so you can say, I am stress-free. 
I am relaxed. Whatever your intention, come back. Create it as an I am statement and see how that feels in your mind, in your body, in your heart, in your spirit. And repeating it to yourself as you sink into this final rest position. Slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes, awakening the body, bringing life back into the extremities. Turn your head from side to side, a slow awakening. Begin to bring one knee toward your chest, followed by the other. See if you can take your hands to the fronts of your shins, if not, maybe behind the knees, and just rock a little from side to side. Roll on to your right side. Just pausing for a moment in a fetal position. And then begin to just press yourself up. So you can stay on your seat. If it's not comfortable to be on your seat, then just return back to your chair. You can use your chair to kind of help you up. I'm just gonna turn mine around to face you guys. If you're comfortable on the floor, stay on the floor. Good. Close your eyes. Rest one hand on your heart. Rest one on your belly. The heart is that center, that seat of feeling, of emotion. So see if you can really feel that intention that you established at the beginning of class in every fiber of your being. The hand over your belly represents what's called the hara or the sea of chi. It's also in Hebrew called the baten, which means the shelter of our innermost being. So see if you can tuck away that intention. Save it for later in that shelter of your innermost being. Bring your hands together at heart center where the joining of opposites heals all opposites. Bow your head to your heart. Lift your heart to your head. The mindful one in me sees and honors the mindful one in you. Namaste.